Let's start with arrays now. Arrays in JavaScript are slightly different than what you may be used to if you are familiar with other programming languages like C or Java. If you recall from how an array is defined in other programming languages, an array is basically a data structure or a container object that can hold a fixed number of elements of the same type. It means that in an array, we can only have a fixed number of items, which we have to specify at the time of creating the array. And once we do that, the number of items that we can have in the array cannot change. So these statements would be incorrect in the Java programming language. Also, each element of the array is at an adjacent memory location. That is the memory layout of an array is contiguous. All right. But in the JavaScript world, things are a little different. So let's see how we create and use arrays in JavaScript and what could be a few pitfalls if we try to use arrays in the traditional way as in other programming languages. Let's declare a variable, call it my array and initialize it to an empty array, just like this open and close square brackets. All right. Now this is an array literal, which is an empty array. If you recall in other languages like Java, once we initialize an array, we cannot change the number of elements. But right now my array points to an array of zero length. But we can easily add the first element in the array by saying my array and use the array index of zero for the first element within square brackets. And let's initialize it to the string zero in English. All right. So now the size of the array has increased from zero to one because there is one element in it now. So the first difference here is that we need not specify the size of the array when creating it. The array can grow dynamically as and when we add elements. All right. Another difference from traditional arrays is that the type of the elements need not be the same. So the first element that we added to our array was a string, right? We can add the next element as a Boolean type. So let's say my array one is equal to true. All right. And then let's add the next element as a number. So we say my array two is equal to the number four. All right. Let's see what the array looks like now. So let's type in the variable name and the ripple interpreter evaluates the array and prints it out. Cool. So these are some important things that you should know about arrays in JavaScript. But wait, there are some more differences, which we will see in the next lecture.